Hello, everyone. Thanks for having me here. Uh, so today we'll be sharing indeed some design principles from a project we've been working on over the last few months. Um, and the idea is trying to understand what are the basic properties that a system should have so to, ha so to create a good foundation for cross-chain uh, uh, cross uh, safe, basically. So let's look at the problem. Today, safes get often deployed on more chains, but this creates, like, this is very problematic, basically. Uh, first, because we may have a different address on uh, different chains, but also simply because UX is a nightmare, and we may end up with a uh, like, very complex interaction model while um, holding our funds on different chains. So how do we circumvent that? Uh, and how do we like, protect ourselves from the systemic risks introduced by the trust assumptions of bridges? Often, uh, unfortunately too often, I will say, um, this is the compromise that projects uh, are doing today. They design a system which can be really very scalable. They have some good ideas on security, but security is not really m maximized. There are some ideas in most cases, I will say, on how to make the system secure, but like Ultimately, what goes in production and we are actu what we're actually using every day uh, is not that safe after all. There are trust assumptions that are little understood, and transparency is not always uh, you know, up to the degree we would expect. There are some websites like uh, L2Bit and many others that have done a very good job in like, highlighting this and highlighting uh, compromises that we, we have done so far. Unfortunately, uh, this is still insufficient for uh, maximizing the security you would expect in, in a wallet or you know, in, a, in a smart account. This is like um, a prototype we have been working on last year uh, called Crosschain Safe, which basically uh, uses Ashi. You can see Ashi in the middle. Ashi is like a, um, basically a bridge abstraction layer that is designed to aggregate multiple bridges at once so that you don't rely on the trust assumptions on just one of those. So it's designed to maximize security, in short, and to avoid lock-ins. So how does it work? Well, let's assume you have like a safe on the Ethereum mainnet and then like uh, some children safes on different chains. Like for example, you may have a secondary safe on a Gnosis chain. So in that case, you need to send a message across chains to propagate your instructions. This is like a use case where you may want, for example, because a DAO is deployed on the Ethereum mainnet, to interact to a secondary safe via the primary safe. So how would it work in, like this, in this architecture? Well, with Ashi, the basic core principle is that like, um, you rely on external bridges as if they were oracles. And each of these bridge is basically relaying the same message with, with redundancy. So as you can see here, uh, in this setup, there are, for example, three bridges, three oracles that you are using at the same time, and you are look, looking for consensus. So what is the message that you are actually sending cross-chain? Well, it can either be the instruction itself that you may want to give to your secondary safe from your primary one, or it may be something like the block propagation um, like the block relaying, basically block header relaying of your state on the Ethereum mainnet to like the layer two of choice or to a different network of choice. This is one architecture. Uh, we think this is very interesting and um, like it's basically op it opens up to many possibilities. We wanted in this presentation not really to focus on Ashi, but on what we think should be the basic design principles that have driven our design and that in general we think should drive uh, the foundation of cross-chain uh, for safe. So this is what we built. So let's start from this. Um, these were the three um, like main design principles we have taken home with the prototype. In our opinion, this is like a good start, but as you will see later, not really enough. But let's start from, from this, which unfortunately is not something like given for granted yet in the ecosystem. So security in depth, future proofness, and avoiding vendor lock-ins. So um, let's start from no vendor lock-ins. What does it mean? Well, today we have many solutions, many 
uh, bridging and interoperability protocols that are sort of competing with each other and trying to convince you as you know, as a user or as a protocol, that their solution is the best, right? Um, in many cases, things you know have improved over time. So for sure, what I can say is that, like over the years, we have seen things getting better and better. However, you don't really want like uh, something like Safe to be locked in into any single protocol. So whatever today may look like the best bet or a very good compromise or good solution is not necessarily the best solution tomorrow. And since trust assumptions and like possible, let's say, complications are not always extremely clear or understood, it's important not to like introduce new complexity that locks you in into this system. This is something that uh, over the years we have seen several times. The first example that comes to my mind is like, uh, Reentrancy attacks that were not really fully understood before they happened the first time with the DAO, right? Uh, but there are many others that we have seen over the years. So this is like too much, like too important as a component, as a primitive to save, um, to rely on external trust models and to external systems that lock you in to their interface and to their security properties. Another one is that since bridges still all have like some trust assumptions indeed, it's not sufficient, in our opinion, to just rely on one of those. Because like, we don't have like, uh, the tools today and the understanding and the maturity in the ecosystem to really evaluate the risk to, to a proper degree. So things and our understanding and technologies evolve over time. And this is the reason why there is no um, like, in, in our opinion, a good architecture is like in no way should avoid having multiple layers of security, which is something that is extremely simple to obtain today. So if you want more layers of security, which traditionally in cybersecurity is called like security in depth approach, you should go for it. There is no reason not to go for it. Um, what does it mean in practice? In practice, it means basically to have redundancy on multiple layers so that if the security of one of those falls apart, for example, because of new vulnerabilities found or be before, because they are hacked, the entire system shouldn't just fall down. Okay? So you can get this. Um, like Ashi, for example, enables it. You can do like a multi-sig like scenario. This is the very reason why most of us in this room today probably use safe, right? You don't want a single uh, like key, a single EOA being compromised uh, leading to a complete fund loss. You want basically to have multiple keys securing your funds. Similarly, we can have multiple oracles securing your cross-chain messages. Don't just use one. Using one may sound super safe, but the moment you know, they get attacked, maybe for new attack vectors that were not even uh, you know, discovered uh, in the wild before, like new approaches, um, you, you can get protection with those by using multiple layers. Another one is future-proofness. Like these contracts, in some cases, they have some upgradability paths, right? But ideally, you, you, will tend to, you will try to maximize immutable contracts and maximize future compatibility at the same time. This is extremely challenging, of course, and we have tried to you know, sort of design ways to make this work with you know, smart time locks or with constraints um, for several years now. But it's important, whatever decisions we make around cross-chain, to design a system which is extremely thin and extremely modular and flexible for future use, so that if something new gets released in a few years, we can just basically somehow upgrade to it or benefit from it indirectly. These are all things that actually um, we can achieve today. Um, so in my opinion, there, are, there is no reason not to do it. Um, actually, there is one reason, which is that in most cases, to get those properties, today you will have high gas costs. So this is unfortunately a compromise um, that today you have to do. So if you want to have redundancy, you need to send the message via more than one bridge. If you want to have abstraction and avoiding lock-ins, you need to have a new abstraction layer, which, sure, can be very thin, but it's still there. So it will imply higher gas costs. Unfortunately, today, um, I would say people, in many cases, make compromises trying to prefer uh, speed and uh, lower costs rather than security. We can actually have both, in our opinion, and this is something on which we are doing a lot of research and development, along with other teams in the space, clearly. 
Um, so can we actually have a system which is you know, scalable, future-proof, with no vendor lock-ins, and that basically is also you know, secure, of course, uh, but is not as expensive and you know, as slow, potentially? Um, we think the answer is positive, and that we should look behind the scenes to see how to, ach to achieve it. So if we look at bridges and how those oracles work today, in most cases, they are backed by like, some kind of proofs. So proofs are like basically portable verifications of statements. That's how we define them, right? So they are like uh, something verifiable that backs a given statement, like the instruction you want to send from a chain to another, or the state of Ethereum on another chain. Those proofs today are a core part of basically the scalability roadmap and the work that we are all doing, not just on bridges, um, but also on vertical scalability, like on securing layer twos, for example, and upchains, um, but also you know, fetching data from external services like oracles or delegating off-chain computations of chain. This all involves proofs to some degree. Most of you may be familiar with zero-knowledge proofs, but it's not just zero-knowledge proofs. There are a variety of proofs, like you know, attestations coming from trust execution environments, zero-knowledge proofs, but also other proofs like inclusion in Merkle trees via Merkle paths, all kinds of proofs. Unfortunately, these proofs have issues today, because basically um, verifying them is normally expensive. It's all very fragmented. Like If you, cho if you choose a, a given uh, proving system, you are typically locked there. Like you need to write a code for it. You need to like have gas costs that depend on its inner workings. You need to have basically you lose many of the good properties that we saw earlier. You can actually use them via abstraction layers that are super expensive on chain. But as we have seen, this is extremely expensive and doesn't it make it attractive enough um, to most people? So how can we solve all, all these problems uh, that include you know, also clearly uh, complexity and you know, in the case of zero-knowledge proofs, uh, code uh, and algorithms that are understood by very few? Um, and th all, all these problems you see here, basically. Um, we think different new ingredients are needed. And those ingredients are something that we are experimenting and that also other teams are experimenting with. And we think that by putting together all these efforts, we can actually create a superior system. So one is basically being, being able to retain uh, redundancy of proofs, as we saw earlier, uh, and this security in depth system. So these multiple layers of security. So we, ideally, we need a system to basically include proofs of various kinds not just zero knowledge proofs, but also TE proofs and so on, in a like system of some kind. Let's not define it yet. Then we need like a process of some kind to basically aggregate them and index those facts. So aggregating it is like the first step. There are many teams that are working on this aggregation part, which is like looks super promising uh, and can actually help to socialize the gas costs so that we can lower in practice the cost that each user would have to include those proofs and this redundancy. But it's not just about aggregation. It's also about you know, indexing those proofs and normalizing somehow the statements we are backing the, uh, with proofs and being able to basically use it as if it was you know, a database, basically. Like being able to efficiently check redundantly if a given fact we are interested in is actually you know, verified, backed by proofs of various kind, and actually true. So this is something that today um, we are missing, but we are slowly getting there. Ideally, we will reach a state where this new system is formalized and we'll be able to basically prove everything, basically, basically all kind of proofs, all kind of statements, all kind of facts, everywhere, meaning in a chain agnostic way. Uh, we all know that SAFE, uh, you know, uh, eventually will go beyond EVM, uh, but also on EVM, it's important to be agnostic. It's not that we just have a given layer two stack. We have competing ones. People today want to interact with many of those. So it's important to have a system which is completely agnostic to you know, the specific chains. And all at once, meaning we can actually minimize, socialize the costs by having this system, this database, working as if it was a single entity so that it can benefit and service the entire ecosystem of chains. If we have this, 
we can basically achieve those four key design principles, which today we don't have yet, but that basically they are not that far. They probably require some more work, but we can achieve them. So security in depth, again, redundancy to make it as safe as possible, future proof, so that you know, if new solutions get released, we can actually benefit from the improvements and the, the, these novelties. And avoiding vendor lock-ins, because it's just too important to give away you know, uh, the security of your safe to unclear and external trust models. Um, and gas efficiency and speed, which today is not really achieved just yet. Thank you for your attention. If you have questions, I have nine seconds left. <laughs>